Well, it's that time again. Um, we have a new build of the Community Theme Creator, uh, version 3.1. And um, it's got a fair number of uh, features and changes, and as always, a number of fixes. Um, but the number of features are far more than I had uh, planned, and I've got to give thanks to my patrons for um, making all these suggestions, and uh, I was able to implement um, as many as I could <laughs> in the time that I was giving myself a f uh, for version 3.1. So, um, so this video is really just to go over uh, the new features and, and changes. Um, and forgive me, I'm still going to go over uh, some of the stuff I covered on one of my progress update videos. Okay, I just want to complete um, a feature and change list uh, within this video. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so one of the most uh, requested features, <clears throat> and actually uh, this wasn't requested by um, uh, any of my patrons, but uh, uh, previously on the LaunchBox forum, this was one of the uh, most requested feature. Um, so I've, I've gone into editor, we're in full screen. Um, and I've included a tip to show you that by moving or placing your mouse pointer at the top of the screen, it will reveal a menu bar. Okay. That was not what was requested. What was requested when you reveal the menu bar, double click. Now you're in windowed mode. All right. So you can now toggle between full screen editor and windowed mode anytime you want. All right. Okie dokie, and uh, it will remember the state. So if I close and edit, it remembers. Okay. Uh, even if I move this one here and move that, you know, off here and exit, it will remember the setup. Okay. Um, so there you go. Yeah, you can now run your editor within a window. So speaking of editor, uh, the next set of features um, all revolve around the editor. Okay. So if I go back in to edit and I want to move this UI element left and right without disrupting the, um, the Y axis, press and hold the shift key start moving the element left and right. And as you can see, I'm also moving my mouse pointer up and down, but it's already locked on the X axis. Okay. Same is true on the Y, press and hold the left shift key. It's only affecting the Y axis now. Okay. And I've added a new, actually, I've added a couple of menu options in here. But the first, the first one I'm going to talk about here is auto save. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. So you can switch it off, but auto save will range from every minute up to every 30 minutes. Okay, so it will just kick off in the background, save, notify you that your work is being saved, and that's it. Okay. And for the next couple of features, I'm going to exit um, this platform view. I want to be in a game view. OK, stay in the game view. I'm going to click the edit view button. And um, what I'm going to do here is double click on the game pad. 
And normally you would hit the cursor keys, okay, to affect the wheel, or uh, use your mouse to affect the wheel by clicking on the uh, virtual D-pad buttons, or you can simply connect your controller and control your wheel like so. And the A and B buttons work as well. Let's see. I don't know if I have a text games view. I do. That's good. Not. I need to go into a different view. Different theme, I should say. Any of them, really. Let's go into this one real quick. All right. Again, gamepad must be enabled. Um, <clears throat> and now it will receive input from the gamepad. Press button A. We have this menu. Press button B. We back out. So... It's more kind of natural. This is probably, or more often than not, this is the way that you're going to control Big Box. So I wanted to kind of bring that to the editor. All right. So that is providing the ability to use a gamepad, a real gamepad, while in the editor. Now I'm going to switch to wheel item templates in this theme and um, hit edit. And again, new menu option, this time canvas style. I've got it set to dark, but you can set it to light. You can set it to checkerboard. And obviously, as you can see, light and checkerboard, you can hardly see the text here. So I have it set to dark. Well, obviously, you can have the opposite as well, um, where whatever wheel item or actually even your view, if you're using um, a light background and you've got light text um, or your canvas is light and you've got text, light colored text, then obviously you can switch to, uh, to dark. All right. So I've just given you uh, another option, um, your canvas background. Now we're going to exit and uh, we're going to switch back to uh, a view. And you probably didn't notice what just happened. But um, what I'm going to do I'm going to remain in platforms and Sony PlayStation, but I'm going to click on Resident Evil. Okay. And now I'm going to go up to the wheel item template modifier. I'm going to pick a completely different platform. I'm going to edit the template. All right. I do whatever I need to do. I save, discard, doesn't really matter. And then I want to switch back to views. And when I do so, it's remembered what view I was in. I was in text games view and it remembers my filter criteria. So I was filtering on platforms, the PlayStation, Sony PlayStation is the, the platform and the game that was selected. And also it will remember whatever current configuration I was in at the time. Okay, so if I was in a Sony PlayStation configuration before I jumped into the wheel item template modifier, it would remember that too. So <clears throat> again, this was another request from uh, my patrons uh, to be able to kind of switch back into the original view um, coming out of uh, a wheel item template or even custom images for that matter. Okay. So we'll come out of this view, well, sorry, we'll come out of this theme and we'll just go into uh, this 3.1 test and I want to click 
click on, let's say I'll click on War Games. And uh, we haven't done anything in this one yet, so I click on Edit View. And by default, the a default configuration wall view um, element is added. This is nothing new. But this time, you didn't get a message indicating that this uh, wheel element is mandatory. Okay. Now, I will need to change the text up here. It still says mandatory UI elements. It should say something like default. But regardless, um, it, uh, it's not mandatory. So I've just deleted the wheel. So if you have your own user source and you wish to use that instead, you can bring it in and um, use that instead, instead of using my generated code. It's entirely up to you. Um, also, it allows you to reference what I deem legacy wheels that allow the wheel items to be uh, rotated progressively. So if you were creating a curved wheel, um, you can't do that with uh, the new wheel logic in Big Box. You have to refer to the old legacy wheel code. All right. So that was one of the reasons why I'm allowing the deletion of a wheel um, within a view so that you can incorporate your own. All right. Or you can copy, <laughs> you know, you may have spent a great deal of time copying or uh, creating a wheel uh, design on one view and you just simply want to say you know what I'll delete it from here and copy it from the other view and keeping everything else um, intact on this view well now you can do that so you, you've got more options now and then speaking of user source I know I covered this in uh, progress update video but we'll do it one more time um, so I'm going to add some user source and, uh, let's see, I'm going to ignore whatever's there. I'm going to say, um, I don't know, 3.1, 3.1 user source test. All right. And so we've got new tags, and uh, I believe my demo was something like, whoops, like this, and I tagged it to say something like, what was it, was it designer? And what was it? Publish. And now whatever code I put between these two tags, publish and designer, depending on um, what mode you're in. Um, it, so, for example, if you're running within the editor, um, it will and basically utilize this code. When you publish the theme, it will take the code between these tags here. All right, so I'll show you. We'll add one more outside of the, the tags. And beautify that. So just to recap what I've done here, I've got a stack panel, so it'll stack elements on the vertical. And uh, I've said 
the first element that it's going to show, the first row that it's going to show is I'm running within editor, within the editor slash big box. And then within this special tag designer, um, it's going to produce some text that says I'm running within the editor. And then the last tag or the last text block is uh, I'm running within big box. All right. So the expectation is because I'm running within the editor, I'm only going to see these first two lines, uh, first two rows of text. All right. So if I hit save, and there you go. All right. When I publish, you'll see this first row and this row. Okay. It will not include this code when you publish the theme, only this line of code here. All right. So I, like I said, my apologies. I know I covered this in the previous video. I just wanted to cover it one more time. All right. You'll find it will prove to be very, very useful. So we're going to edit, sorry, exit. We'll exit. And uh, let's see, let's see what we have for kind of cheat in there let's see okay this is a good one edit <clears throat> and i'm gonna add a rectangle and to the rec well actually not to the rectangle i'm going to say users resource but this time it's kept the foreground color what i'm going to do i'm going to set it up as a gradient here uh, Actually, uh, what do I want to do? It's 20 maybe. So make that one 80. So now I have a essentially a gradient resource. I can come down to the wheel and where it says opacity mask. Now I have a new drop down option. Gradient resource, rectangle, and as you can see, the edges here, utilizing the opacity mask, it's gradually fading. What I'll do, I'll make the gradient a little bit more um, obvious. Let's set this to uh, 30 and 70, and I'm going to bring this up to... 90 and 10 percent save that and now you can barely see the left and right items okay so obviously you can you can play with this to your heart's content 95 i'll make it five okay there you go so now in addition to uh, op um, opacity mass that you can reference uh, an ellipse or a rectangle, you can now reference them uh, um, for gradient, gradient masks. So another highly requested uh, feature was to support the startup, shutdown, and pause themes. Okay, so I'll exit here and I'll switch over to another theme. Go over to this one. And as you can see, I've added three views, startup, shutdown, and pause. Very basic. And um, <clears throat> these views are just like any other views. Um, you can leverage uh, the same uh, UI elements. So if you want to add videos, you can do that. Um, it's entirely up to you. If you want to add GIFs, you can do that. It's not a problem. Um, so anyway, let's let's go to uh, startup. Uh, 
uh, let's see, I've added a new UI element called Startup Progress Bar. It's kind of self-explanatory. I've put it inside a frame, so it looks like a, you know, a lozenge. Um, and as you saw, supports animation too. It's not a problem. Shut down. It's real basic. I think I'm just using uh, fan artwork in the background here. Got game over spelled out. Each letter is animated, so it creates like a, a wave effect. And uh, last but not least is the pause theme. And it's real simple. It's just a text wheel. And uh, I just took the same styling um, from uh, text games view. Okay. Or um, which is the same as uh, the system options view. All right. So we'll just go ahead and um, we'll just go ahead and publish. Right, and we'll fire up big box, and that was pyramids. So we'll go to pyramids. All right. And um, we'll fire up SSX Tricky as our loading. There's the game. I'll hit P for pause. There's our pause theme. I'll exit the game. There's our Computer Space was released in November 1971, and it is available on Arcade. Yeah, thanks for Alexa. Um, and that was the shutdown. So, um, so there you go. There, there you have it. Now, what you can do is you can actually leverage um, these themes within Launchbox, too. Um, and I've already deployed, or when I publish uh, Pyramids, it already deployed um, the startup theme and pause theme to the appropriate locations. Um, but there's some instructions in there if you wish these themes to be um, available within LaunchBox. So let's, let's go take a look. Let's see. They're located LaunchBox... So if we have a look at, it doesn't really matter which one, startup themes or pause themes, I'll just go with the first folder. And it was pyramids. And I'll have a look at the readme. Here it is here. Just zoom in. So it just explains that if you wish to use these startup, shutdown, pause themes, the themes created outside of the community theme creator. It just lets you know what you need to do. Okay. And then for LaunchBox use, what you need to do is um, uh, take these two DLLs, all right, and copy them to the Launch LaunchBox plugins folder, all right. And... Um, when I publish these themes, I supplied the plugins folder. All right, so there they are here. And copy them to the launch box. Well, I already had one there, but I didn't have the, uh, the, the other one. Okay, cool. All right, so now that I've got both DLLs in the launch box plugins, I should be able to just fire up launch box.
and uh, let's see, what was it? It was SSX, tricky, double click. There you go. Game will fire up. Hit P to pause. I'm going to exit. There's your game over. It's all good. All right. So they they do work between launch box and big box, as you can clearly see. And there you go. So that's uh, startup and pause themes. All right. So uh, the last feature that was added is to retain the position of all your main windows. So that's the, um, the primary window, the initial window that comes up. So you can preview your themes and the editor and the UI elements panel um, and its properties. So, for example, if I wanted, if I wanted the main menu, uh, sorry, main window to be up here, and I close it, restart it, likewise. If I go into editor. Perhaps I want the editor here. And then you could have Photoshop on this screen. I mean, it all depends on what you want to do. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was showing you. <laughs> so if I want this uh, to be up there, for example, okay and I exit the editor and go back in. Again, it retains its position. So it supports multi-monitor um, and, or, or you know, multi-single, it doesn't really matter. It, it, it knows where um, it should be placed and whether or not it's a full screen um, editor or not. Okay, I'll do this one more time. There you go. Okay. So, I mean, it, it, it remembers. Now, <clears throat> there is one caveat, and it's, it's not something that uh, you're going to be doing uh, every day, but any time that you go into uh, display settings in, in Windows, and if you alter the resolution settings or you change the placement of your monitors basically um, the community theme creator wipes back to its default and it will no longer remember um, its previous uh, position and size and window state um, it goes back into a default mode so you have to you know place the windows accordingly but this is not something that you would be doing on a day-to-day -day or a week-to-week -week basis anyway. But I just wanted to let you know that essentially it's it's looking at your um, uh, monitor configuration to figure out whether or not it should um, uh, utilize the old um, or the last uh, window placement and size settings. Okay. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's um, that's the last feature. So we do have some uh, notable mentions. Um, so we've just covered startup and pause themes. So in order to enable those for big box, you can click on theme settings here and I've included the game startup and game pause options now so you go in here show loading message is by default enabled 
startup screen, and then you just simply pick your startup theme. And in this case, I'm going to select my newly published Pyramids startup theme. Um, same is true for pause. The default is no pause theme. Select Pyramids. And as soon as I press OK, next time I publish this theme, it will now produce um, theme-specific overrides to Big Box. So it will tell it Pyramids will use the Pyramid Startup and Pyramids Pause themes. Okay. Um, just a couple of cosmetic things. I'm using a tint of blue on some of the uh, the panels here. Uh, theme manager, same again. Um, I've moved the new theme button. It was all the way over here. I've moved it over here. Um, and I've changed this up a little bit. There's a few more options in here. But, uh, you know, to indicate whether or not aspect ratio is in force for this theme, this kind of thing. And you see a smaller thumbnail of the selected theme up here. Um, and I've got it all centered, so it's, it's just a lot easier to read. Uh, creation, date and time. Um, yeah, it's just a lot easier to read or get the information from... Uh, the selected theme. Let's see. Um, uh, the code generator. So when you're publishing or when you're in the editor itself, um, or even while you're previewing um, your views from this window, uh, code generation is slightly faster. Um, I've already covered theme manager some visual tweaks there. Um, when you publish your theme and your pub and, and your theme includes a startup and uh, pause theme, the fonts are automatically distributed to um, those theme folders. Just in case uh, you weren't aware of that, it, it does that just as it does today um, with uh, big box themes. Uh, a font subfolder is created, so you don't have to... It, it creates the entire package for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, system message box. Oh, yeah. So if I were to hit delete, um, so the uh, message box has been styled uh, to match the uh, color scheme um, of uh, Community Theme Creator. Um, but the other thing that it does too is if I was using, um, actually, if, if I had this window up on the other monitor and I performed the same operation, this would actually follow me to the second monitor instead of you know, being displayed on the primary monitor. So it it will follow based on whatever action I was performing at the time on whichever monitor um, I was performing on at the time. So it was just a little thing. Um, <clears throat> memory management has been improved. Um, that's, a, that's a fix. So as you're hopping in and out of the editor, it's not just constantly uh, eating up memory and resources. It will relinquish resources um, as you exit the editor now. Um, you can now create platform category specific views for uh, game views. Um, that was a fix. Uh, let's see. Mono monochrome effect colors. Uh, okay. I didn't actually cover that one. I had it in here. One of these game views. Okay. I think this might be it. So if I went to 
Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah. So I've enabled monochrome for the wheel item. And I've said, if it's Super Nintendo Entertainment System, make it red. And then if the selected item uh, don't apply monochrome to it. Okay, so that's why it's always in color. <clears throat> and then if I select um, PlayStation 2, we have um, the wheel items are uh, blue monochrome. <clears throat> and again, the center or selected item is in color, full color. Yeah, and then PlayStation 1, I believe it's gray. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's been added to 3.1. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Drop down lists. I was uh, previously using a, a Windows 3.1, sorry, Windows 3.1, a Windows 11 um, uh, layout. And the drop down would actually appear over the top of the drop down box itself. Okay. However, that was causing issues, and uh, which which would mean that you know as soon as you hit the uh, the drop down box, it would show the list for a fraction of a second and then disappear. In some cases, the only way that you could actually ensure that the list would stay up on screen was to press and hold the left mouse button, which kind of defeats the purpose so anyway I've, uh, I've I've placed the list below the uh, drop down box um, and it's dynamic so if there isn't a, enough room uh, below it will appear above the drop down box so don't worry about that um, so yeah I mean that's application wide um, for these drop downs so you won't you won't be uh, fighting these drop-down boxes anymore. Um, let's see, another one I had in application settings. Oh yeah, so I added this in version three, and in some cases it just failed. Um, it, it would run for a long time, and then it would just stop and not return any results. Um, that's been fixed now, um, and I haven't encountered any kind of crashing or anything like that. And I've been playing around by installing um, LaunchBox within itself and um, on my Mac, which is accessible via my PC. So, you know, if it finds multiple iterations of uh, LaunchBox, you'll get another drop down, and then you pick the right path. That's really what it was for. Um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, mm, no, not really. It's that's about it. There was an issue with uh, some drop downs where you would select a folder name, and depending on how you name the folder, if it had a period in it. So if you named your folder, I don't know, uh, 3.1 uh, images, for example, um, it would truncate the folder name um, and it would ignore anything from point one onwards. So you would just see, you know, folder three and that's it. So obviously with that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't detect any images or whatever content was in that folder because the path name was truncated. So that's that's fixed. Um, I think that's really it. There's just some crash issues that I had resolved. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. So I just want to give thanks to um, all my patrons. Actually, um, they they came up with a uh, an incredible list of of uh, changes and enhancements. Some of which. I've incorporated into 3.1, but right now I have a poll going um, for um, uh, 3.2 and, and obviously future 
builds at CTC and there's some really exciting um, requests currently on the poll so uh, we'll see how that plays out in a week's time but again you know thanks to all my patrons for um, supporting me and uh, providing such valuable input and uh, uh, quite the uh, quite the commentary on uh, discord uh, I'm, I'm glad <clears throat> I'm glad all you guys have uh, got quite the sense of humor it's good but um, so anyway yeah it'll be interesting to see where we're at uh, in a week's time with the poll um, when that ends I'll probably do another a very very quick video just to indicate um, uh, what the plan is, what the game plan is for 3.2. All right, so until then, enjoy 3.1, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video to talk about what uh, is potentially going to be added to 3.2 and beyond. All right, take care.